Brandon with Davidson Audio and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to fix, actually we're just going to do an install video to correct a very common issue for the Indians from the Chieftains, the Challengers, the Pursuits, the Roadmasters, all of them get this dreaded windshield motor and now it's not going to do it. There you go. Stripped out. So we are going to correct it with the Novak Corrector. All jokes aside, Steve Novak had this nice billet piece made ahead of time before everybody started realizing how bad these were because he wanted to correct this issue. The issue here with this motor assembly from Indian is this right here is plastic. All of this is metal. So as you go down and up, down and up, or if you use the auto up and down feature a lot like I do, it'll ride all the way down, it'll stop, and this gear will turn just a skosh more, or it'll go up and it'll do it again. Thus weakening this, stripping it. Depending on where you live, it probably softens up and strips out. So, Mr. Novak, created this, this billet aluminum CNC piece to replace that. That's a nice metal on metal, not having to strip it out. I personally have had this done to my bike, Bill's bike here, some other customers' bikes, my Chieftain, my Challenger, all of them. Absolutely love it, don't have to worry about it anymore. So we're gonna show you just how to take this apart, install this, and put it in the bike. We're also gonna show you how to disassemble the bike, which we're gonna start with that right now. So as you can see, we've already taken the fairing off the Challenger, which if you wanna know how to do that, you can watch one of our previous videos that we'll link in this video on how to completely disassemble this bike. We've already done the video on that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna further disassemble this bike to include the windshield, the windshield frame, this upper inner fairing bracket, and and we're gonna take the fairing tray off as well. And then to include the windshield motor and the OEM power unit here. Let's go ahead and get started disassembling this bike. So we're gonna start at the windshield and the windshield frame. And to take this off, you're gonna remove the five four millimeter windshield nuts that hold the windshield to the frame. Now there is a like slotted T-nut in the back. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you put your hand behind it to catch them so they don't go get, fall and get lost. And then right back here and here, there's a five millimeter Allen that you're gonna to have to remove. And then this five millimeter and 10 millimeter, I'm gonna remove all of this, which will allow access here. So let's go ahead and get this removed and then we will move on to the upper inner fairing. gauge cluster bezel cover, I guess you can call it. So right here in the middle, I like to just take it and you're gonna use like the palm of your hand and you're just gonna pop it up and hold the back side right here. And it pops right up off. There's these two tabs that go into here. And then this push tab and this push tab correlate to this slit here and here. That'll pop it in, so like here, it just fits in the front and then you push it down. So that's where you can pop it up and pull it off. And now that we're at this part, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, Torx bits that we need to remove. This is a T40, or you can use a six millimeter to take these off. So we're gonna use a T40 and remove these and we've already finger loosened all of these for the video. Obviously, use a ratchet or an electric ratchet or impact to take them off. I never use an electric impact or ratchet to put these on because with plastic, if you over torque them, then obviously you break them off. So let's get all these removed and then we'll pop this off.
All right, now that we have all of these off, what we're going to do is we're going to pop it off. So I like to grab here in the middle, like right on the outer parts of these arms because there's two tabs there. All right, let's do one side at a time. And just like that, it pops off. So it is a little hard at times. And if you heard that little noise, it's these little white retaining clips right here that go on here and here. Sometimes they'll stay with the part and then they'll fall down in here so you'll have to go fishing them out. So we are going to modify this before we put it back on, but we'll show you that in the video a little bit later. So let's set this aside and continue disassembling. The next thing I like to take off is the windshield motor itself right here. So this will be three four millimeters, so one, two, and three, plus the electrical connector right here that you're gonna take off and unplug, and then this can get fished right on in here. And then we will take our four millimeter and remove these four bolts, three bolts. The whole motor comes out with the water that's in the line. Um, this one has a bad plastic piece in here. So we're actually going to be replacing this with the Mr. Novak's metal billet piece there. So at this point, we're going to go take this over to the workbench, disassemble this whole thing and show you how to disassemble it, clean it, put the new metal piece on here, get it put back together and put back on the bike. We're at the workbench and we're going to start disassembling this windshield motor. So there's a couple of tools that you're going to need for this, a little bit of time and some patience. So you're obviously going to need a ratchet. This is going to be a seven 30 seconds socket. which is gonna be for these two lock nuts down here. You're going to need a Phillips screwdriver, which is gonna be used for these four screws here and the four screws holding this bracket to the actual motor itself. Then you're gonna need an eight millimeter to loosen up these two. They are keyed on the back side here. So if you just hold them, you can loosen them up. And yes, we did pre-loosen some of these ahead of time. You're going to need some snap ring pliers because right here you have a nice little snap ring they have to take off. And that brings us to our last tool. And this is a baby pair of channel locks or a crescent wrench, whatever. No, this is yeah channel locks. Because what you want to do is on these, I like to just take this little pair of channel locks, hold it, and loosen this, because if not, and these are on here good because they got a little dab of Loctite on them, these shafts will start to unthread from the bracket itself. Thus, then you're taking the whole thing out. Just use a little channel locks here, clean it up. It won't mar it enough to make a difference. I do it all the time. Then you'll need a little bit of grease. I like to put a little bit of grease on the gear itself and on the worm gear there. And then obviously you'll need your Novak corrector gear. That's what we're gonna call it. So if he likes it, cool. Steve, if not, apologies, my man. Let's get started. Let's remove these four Phillips head screws. The four Phillips screws undone. You can separate the window motor from the actual track and gear assembly. Set this up like this so you don't put grease all over the place. And then we're gonna proceed to disassembling this. Before completely removing these two, as we already started before, I like to get these two nuts off. That way, once these are off and the snap rings off, I can kind of push this down and wiggle it out of place. So let's get these two off and then we'll do the snap ring. Helps to use a shop rag because when you set them down like that, you get grease all over the place. So just, so just set this down so that way you get it on there, not your workbench. Now it's time for your snap ring pliers. Um, you're going to want to set them to where when you pinch, they open up and not the other way where, you know, you bring them in. So make sure your pliers are in the orientation where you squeeze them and they spread out. This is the fun part. You're gonna to wanna to get it in here, which you gotta kind of force it in here because they're almost just too big. And you're gonna pinch them. And there you go. 
our snap ring is out. And now we can set that aside as well. Moves us on to these two, which are the eight millimeters. We'll take these out the rest of the way and separate it. I just like to take these and screw them back together because guess what? Sometimes these just like to fall and roll wherever they want. And then guess what? Now you're looking, now you're going to the hardware store trying to find one. Just put them together and set them aside. Now let's see how much of a pain this is. Some of them like to come right off, some are just a royal pain. So separate it just a little bit and then rock it back and forth. Okay, that one pulled right off. And as you can see, all of this is the remnants of the plastic. You can see there's a bearing right here. That's what the shaft rides in. We will clean this up just a little bit so that way we don't have to worry about more debris and stuff. And then we'll get focusing on this. Okay, as we continue the carnage there, all you're gonna have to do is just grab this, slide it right off, and yeah, let's say that one right there is pretty well toast. There ain't a single thread in there, and that is done. So here, just make sure you watch your orientation. The biggest thing I like to do is, you gotta remember when you take this off, this thing like, angles forward. It looks like it's sitting forward. And then other than that, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It just comes right off. So we'll just do it real quick. So take that off, set it aside. Now here, these lock nuts and these pieces are all threaded. So you're going to take these nuts off first and then unthread the screws from these plates. So this one is going to be a seven millimeter. Apologies, we didn't say that earlier. Like I said, these are threaded with the nuts, so when you go to bust this off, it's not going to unthread the screw. So just nuts, just set them aside. And now you're going to need your Phillips screwdriver again, and you're going to unscrew these four from the plates. So like I said, you can see the threads in there, so these just literally thread right on in there. And one thing I do want to make sure you all see is these are oh so slightly offset so that way they sit inside of this and you want to make sure that when you put it back together you see that it's like right there they line up but if you line it up like this it now lips over a little bit i don't know if you can see it right there see how it lips over so you want to make sure that your orientation is correct because then it'll be nice and flat against here. So now we can just separate it and as you can see there's two indentions here that line this up and keep it into place. So we're going to take this, we're just going to pitch it. This it doesn't matter which way it goes, it just matters when it goes on the worm gear. This sits like that and slides towards the motor. So with here we're going to do this and we're going to stick our two screws in one side. And then remember, you're gonna wanna make sure you orient this back. And if you can see this one, you can kinda see some markings from the nuts, so you know that's the upside. Um, and we're going to push it down. That way, that's the way to go, because then it's flat. As you can see, we're nice and flush here. Let's take the other side and do it upside down so y'all can see what happens when it doesn't line up. You can see there's a little bit of a lip there versus this one being nice and flush. So now we got them all back to right orientation. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run these all the way in tight and then we're gonna put these lock nuts back on. Like I said, right here, you just really wanna make sure that these are flat on here which, yep. Make sure they're nice and flat on here and they're not sticking out any because then they could get caught on something. And now let's just thread on these four lock nuts and use our eight millimeter to uh, get it reinstalled. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of a dab of grease on the front side. And the reason the front side is because when you slide it onto the worm gear itself, it'll force the grease backwards. And like I said, remember, this sits forward. So let's put a little dollop of grease on there and then we're gonna go grab the other part of this.
go grab the actual worm gear part of it, which we just finished cleaning up. So this is going to sit like this. So you want to take this, put a little bit of PB blaster on there to get nice and shiny and a little bit of lubricant on it. So we're going to take this, line it right back up and just get it started. There we go. Sometimes, this, there it is. Sometimes that first little gesture does not want to uh, participate. So we will unspin it just a little bit. Come on. There we go. And I guess it's not wanting any of the grease. So let's see if we can't get it just a little bit here. I just like to coat it in here like this because once you run it up and down, it'll work it through and then we'll get all the excess out of it. So we've worked the gear up and down, spreading that grease on there. I don't like to build up too much grease on it, just a nice little light coating just to help it. Um, we're going to get some clarification with Steve on whether he recommends or not greasing these. So if he ends up telling us don't, then we will let you all know in this video to not do what we just did. But if he says, yeah, go ahead, then obviously grease it as we did. So let's go ahead and get the rest of this reassembled. So again, you're gonna take this part, hold the, uh, the bearing at the end of it so it doesn't just pop out. If it does, it's not a big deal. You're just going to align these while also keeping the bottom of this out of those grooves. So this has got to go out just a little bit. And sometimes, oh well. Sometimes it's just a pain trying to align the bearing in these. So sometimes I'll take it out and then just slide the bearing in after the fact. So they say one half dozen the other. So I like to also loosely put in these two bolts that go in from the bottom here and are indexed at the bottom of it again. Take this eight, tighten these on up. And now we are going to tighten up these two. These are those small, I want to say like 7 30 seconds, which hold on. Yep, these are the 7 30 seconds. We'll just go ahead and take our little baby channel locks. We'll hold this and tighten this. be super super tight like you don't have to go cranking it down anything crazy just make sure that the lock nut is engaged and now we're going to take our snap ring put it in our pliers spread them and find our notch yep there's, it doesn't go all the way down. There's like a little indent in the shaft that that goes around and clamps onto to prevent it from uh, backing out or anything. So at this point, this should, a little bit of force. Hmm. Why is this sucking up? That's gonna make a liar out of me. There we go. I was holding the shaft down. So should slide up and down still. Don't um, 
hold the shaft at the bottom all the way down. So we'll bring it up just a little bit from the bottom. Okay. Right there, and now we're going to put our, ugh. I don't get grease all over the place. Now we're going to take our motor. This only goes on one way, which usually you end up orienting it a couple different ways until you get it to line up. So once you get that aligned up, you're going to drop these four screws in here. And get them started by finger, and then go in here loosely. Start all of them, never crank one down all the way. Then you can go ahead and finger tight them snug. I like to go across from each other. I don't know that it really matters. Give them a good little torque down. That is about all it takes to go ahead and get this all cleaned up and repaired to go back into your bike. So now we got the brand new uh, Novak gear right here, the Novak corrector, and it's all installed, lubed up, ready to go. So we are gonna go back over to the bike, get this installed and get the bike put back together. So let's go ahead and get this windshield motor secured in and get the rest of this put back together. So we just tightened down these three four millimeters right here and as you saw you saw me pulling on the material here and here and that's just to help align these two holes up with these threaded holes because these two holes are the ones where the upper interfering um, water trough whatever you want to call it there's two studs that come down and bolt right here so you really want to make sure that these are freed up so that way you're not um, interfering with that so now it's time to get this reinstalled and now if you're doing this for our aftermarket audio packages, that's where this harness right here needs to be moved to the inside of this stud right here. But first, let's not forget to plug our windshield motor back in and put it around this stud. So now this is the point where you're gonna to wanna to put all these screws back in. You can tighten them on up. So we're going to track this up and down, making sure that we have clearance, which we have plenty of clearance. I mean, there's a whole another couple of zip tie clearance right there, that harness. So we're good to go there. So let's bring it all the way up. And we can now go ahead and get the rest of the windshield put on. We'll go ahead and throw this hood on real quick, get the windshield frame screwed on get the windshield on of it, get everything a test, and that'll be a wrap. Just a quick recap, five millimeter, 10 millimeter, five millimeters, and then you can just snug this up. Don't go super, super tight with it because you can crack these cast pieces. I've done it, it sucks, but it happens. So again, five millimeter, 10 millimeter, five millimeter, five millimeter. It's time to install our customer's Clockworks windshield here. Um, you've got five bolts, two, one, and two, so for five. And that will be a four millimeter Allen that goes back on there with the slotted T-nut. It's got a rectangle, the thread in the middle that will lock into the back of the windshield motor frame right back here like that. And then you will thread the windshield in there. Like I said, don't need to go super, super crazy muscular tight in there. 
just you know give them a nice good snug and just a little bit more and you'll be good to go so let's get this installed now the last part to this is getting the fairing tray put back on the bike um, i'm going to loosely put this on here with some of the modules and their locations i'm not going to do the full backwards reinstallation of this because we're going to be taking it back off to do the audio install on this so very simple two um, t40 torque screws here and here make sure you line up the fairing tray here and here and then you'll see roughly where we route the harness and then um, you can check out our disassembly video or the beginning of this video on where everything goes to make sure yours is put back where it needs to go. Well, that's gonna be a wrap for the windshield motor worm gear replacement or as we like to now call it, the Novak corrector mod. Installation is complete. We took you through the process of disassembling this whole um, upper fairing portion to gain access to your windshield motor. And then from there, got on the bench, disassembled the windshield motor so that way you all know how to do it. And again, I'm really hoping that we were able to capture in detail everything that you need to know and need to do to get this done. I do understand that sometimes, you know, my fat noggin or hands get in the way. So apologies for that. We tried to make sure y'all could see what we were doing throughout the whole process. I know this has been a little bit longer of a video, but I wanted to capture as much detail as we could. And again, you also saw some overlapping footage from our previous video, the fairing shroud cover. That's because the process for both of them are the same. And by no means are we trying to push you to buy a fairing shroud or not. This was just simply, it's it's in the same process. So you're gonna see some of the same footage. Um, but overall, I just wanted to take the time to show you all how to replace that thing that we're doing it for this customer's bike that we're standing on here. That way, if y'all get the dreaded out riding, windshield stops working, that's where you wanna start looking. Go home, turn the bike on, hit that windshield motor. And if you can see the motor spinning, it's the gear is stripped out. It's a very common issue. My 2019 Chieftain had it go out. My 20 Challenger, it went out. Same gear works for both. So this is going to work from your 20, uh, 2018, so far I've verified, 2018 Chieftain Roadmaster all the way to current, and the 2020 Indian Challenger and Pursuit and newer bikes. This will work. They're the same motors. It'll work on all of them. So that's the entire process of doing it. Um, I appreciate y'all sticking through the entire video. And I wanted to touch base one more time on our 1,500 subscriber giveaway. We're less than 400 away from this. And what we're doing is we've teamed up with two other small businesses that are proudly creating parts and moving the Indian motorcycle industry forward. And that is gonna be Mad Monkey Motorsports and Hooney's Garage. If you're not familiar with those two companies, you should be. They, are, they have their own bike in the King of the Baggers series, which is Max Flenders, the racer. It's the yellow bike. Great group of guys. We're gonna do a follow-up video with them. They do everything from, they teamed up with Revolutionary Performance for the 112 Big Board Kit. They've done the chain conversion for the bike. Uh, Hooney's Garage obviously has the ECU flashes for the Challenger and maybe the Chieftain might see a future video on that i don't know maybe um two great companies great people on both of those teams we got to meet them in daytona had a blast talking with them super honest down-to-earth people glad that they're here for the indian motorcycle community and these aren't the only two other businesses that are indian specific there's a couple of more which hopefully we'll get to do some more giveaways with them as well so with that being said it's at 1,500 subscribers, we're giving away one free ECU tune on the three of us to one lucky subscriber. So what do you need to do for us? You need to make sure that you're subscribed to Davidson Audio's YouTube channel. Also, make sure you go over to their social medias, Mad Monkey Motorsports or M3 Motorsports, Hooney's Garage. Make sure you go over there and you follow and like their uh, Instagram and Facebook pages. Show them some support and love for the love that they're showing you all. Then also like and uh, share the channel here as well. And please leave us some comments because I want to know what y'all like and don't like and suggestions you have for the channel and future content as well. 
So please do us that favor, help us crush that 1500 goal subscriber so we can get one of y'all's ECUs flashed on the three of us. And again, it doesn't have to be an Indian motorcycle. The folks over at Hooney's Garage also do Harleys and all sorts of other bikes. So if you win, reach out to us. We'll make sure they can get you set up and we'll get you an ECU flash on the three of us. So again, I'm Brandon with Davidson Audio and we're out.